Um, but session three, we're going to be talking about altmetrics, analytics, and tracking engagement. Um, our first speaker is Ewan Adi, the uh, CEO and founder of Altmetric. And Ewan is going to be talking about seven lessons, what we've learned from trying to measure impact. I'll hand over to you. Thank you very much. Thanks, everyone, for having me here. Um, like Joe said, my name is Ewan, and I run a company called Altmetric. Uh, you can, sometimes people say altmetric.com, and the reason you do that uh, will become apparent in a couple of slides' time. I've changed my, the title of my talk a little bit. The content is pretty much the same. Um, but the main reason is, is because I did have seven lessons about impact. And I realized I was saying just a minute ago, after a while, impact ceases to mean anything to you. It get, you just kind of get into this hand wavy territory. And I thought maybe that wasn't the right talk for here. I shouldn't be that boring for you guys. Um, so we'll see how it goes. Um, but what I, the question I do still want to address is you know, what we've learned from, from trying to measure impact. Um, and the first thing is you probably can't measure impact. Uh, it's a bit of a <laughs> facetious first slide. Uh, yeah. um, I'm going to now expand on that a little bit, what we've learned from trying to measure impact. So measure, we're using a short hand here, right? We're, I'm not really saying um, that our original intention was to you know, make a five-star rating system for any type of impact. And again, I'm going to get into why just now. So um, the first thing you've learned, or we've learned rather, when we start talking about impact and trying to you know, gather evidence for it and all this kind of thing is it's very subjective, right? It means different things to different people. Um, and it's in that sense, it's a bit like art or possibly obscenity, if you've been doing a lot of these impact case studies. Um, people know when they see it, and it's different for different people, right? What your funder thinks is impact and what they want is different, perhaps, to what the press office at your university wants is different to perhaps what your journal wants, the journal that you've published in, uh, if you've published in a journal. Um, and it's possibly different to what you want as well. So it means different things to different people. But we can come up with a very broad definition, right, which is potentially maybe just uh, impact as if your work makes some sort of difference. It doesn't need to be a huge difference. Uh, it just does something. It's not just you publish and nobody ever reads it and nothing ever comes of it. Uh, ever. Before going uh, any further, I should say as well, or I wanted to kind of tackle this up front, people, in including us, tend to conflate a few different aspects of, uh, of uh, impact and quality and attention. But they're definitely different things, right? So quality is literally, you know, how, how good is the, the research object or the piece of work that you're doing? You know, is it rigorous, significant? You know, is, is it original? It doesn't need to be all of these things. Uh, importantly, is it reproducible? You know, is it replicable? And there's no point in having work if um, it's just, you know, based on a statistical error. Uh, is it, you know, pretty simply just like a technical advance or something? It doesn't need to be a massive leap ahead in the field. It can be something that other people can build on. But then that's different, obviously, to attention. Attention is pretty much what you might expect. It's just, are people seeing that article they actually, is actually going anywhere. You're not just putting it in a repository and no one ever sees it ever again. And then finally, we can separate again impact, which is a little bit further down the line and is probably the hardest thing um, to, again, to measure. Um, and it's, uh, again, lots of different de definitions of it, but it makes a difference. You know, it could have a social impact. It could have an economic impact. Uh, there could be some cultural benefit or frame a discussion for a certain group of people, could influence practice, um, the way people think about a problem, all this kind of stuff. And to explain why, or to give some examples of, of how people complete things, so when you think about impact in terms of the ref, for example, um, you know, they say that when these impact case studies, you need to have quality as well, right? The two things are inextricably linked to them. It is possible to have impact without quality. You can think about something like Andrew Wakefield, all that, the autism, MMR stuff, right? Um, it's not necessarily that you can't have one without the other. For refs purposes, they say you must do, and that seems like a good idea, right? People talk about publishing in a high-impact journal. What do they really mean by that? Uh, well, they mean a lot of different things, but first of all, that they think the journal is selecting for quality. There's an assumption there. Um, and they think that by publishing in that journal, it's going to reach the right people or, or more people. So I say high impact doesn't necessarily mean by publishing in that journal you're going to reach a particular, you know, you're going to reach policymakers or whatever. That's not necessarily what 
uh, the journals are set up to do. And a really quick tangent, because uh, I've not got too long, um, and I don't have a solution to this, it's just more of an observation that I think a lot of researchers assume that if you do the first bit, quality, right, I wrote a good paper, that your involvement is then finished. And that's partly, I think, to do with the whole scholarly communication system, and like, the end result is the paper, then it goes out, and then that's fine, I never need to worry about it again, and there's, you know, magic theories come and make sure that people read it and uh, everyone knows about it, interpret it the right way and all that kind of stuff. <coughs> and then finally, the last example I'll give of this is uh, sometimes when we talk about impact, um, an example I hear a lot about is, is uh, engaging with a particular audience, right? public engagement type stuff. And there, I see attention is mixed in with impact. Right? Attention is the, is the kind of impact you want, or, or that's the um, thing that's going to show that there was some impact. So you see what I mean about impact? I've said it so many times already. Um, it does begin to, you know, get more complicated. Funding guidelines and mandates are increasingly looking for this, right? This is coming back to the point of it. Why should you care in the first place? It's because internationally, you know, we can think about, again, the ref here in the UK, also in, uh, in the Netherlands, in the US, pilot studies in, the, uh, in Australia. Um, you know, funders and institutions are becoming increasingly interested, not as like a, you know, step change requiring it, but it just a gradual interest in um, things that are high quality and also things that are having some sort of impact, to be able to demonstrate some sort of impact coming out of the work they fund. And in my view, you know, fundamentally, is it useful to look for this? I think it is. And I think researchers should get the tools to help them gather the evidence for this. Um, and I'll preface this, this next slide by saying I, I originally was a researcher. I was a researcher here in Edinburgh. Uh, my wife was also a researcher who's uh, here in Edinburgh. I love researchers, and I also hate researchers. This is what you get uh, when you talk to researchers about impact. And there's some very legitimate reasons for why. And there's some not so legitimate reasons. Um, I think the natural reaction is, you know, researchers have a lot to do, right? You already have the pressure to create your work and, you know, make it reproducible and all this kind of stuff. And when you start telling people, well, you should also do all this other stuff. You know, if you can, can you make it, can you gather some evidence of impact of it as well and all this kind of thing. And then the natural reaction is, no, uh, go away, you're destroying science. Uh, only bean counters are interested in measuring this kind of thing. The only thing that's important is how good the science is or the research. Um, my academic power is beyond human measure. No one's ever actually said that. But I think that's the implication. Um, which is all very well, but the fact is that, you know, there's a reason people are asking for this impact, right? It's not just to make people's lives harder. Um, when there is a financial crunch, uh, and it comes down to it, you know, do we have a duty, well, or rather do the people funding the work have a duty to find out about what the difference the research is making? And that's a very, you know, there's a, a, a nuanced answer to that, which I'm not going to go into. I think I'm sure later on uh, we're going to hear some uh, interesting takes on it. So, well, okay, I need to show impact. Well, I've published lots of nature papers um, that should demonstrate the right that is a high-impact journal. Well, not really, because traditional citations, if you think about it, reflecting scholarly attention, right? You can cite for all sorts of different reasons. Uh, famously, you know, you don't need to read the things you cite. You know, it's the same with lots of other things we can measure. I'll talk about that in a bit. Um, but importantly, it doesn't, if you think about scholarly indexes like Scopus or Web of Science or even Google Scholar, um, they're really looking at the, the body of scholarly literature, right? Things, that's on the, things that are in the scholarly record and not things like this. So this would be, this is uh, guidelines from NICE, um, the Centre for the Clinical Excellence, um, the body in the UK that gives guidelines to doctors, basically. Uh, you know, what are the guidelines on prevention of cardiovascular disease? And that has a reference list in it, right? It's based on evidence, on research, and a lot of it is from here in the UK, and a lot of it's from outside. But it doesn't appear in anyone's citation counts. You don't say, you know, it's, it's not, uh, I suppose, uh, socially normalized, maybe, to, to put that kind of stuff on your CV yet, necessarily. And that's because there's this gap between what funders and institutions are looking for and what we can currently provide with the kind of tools and the practices 
and especially citations are, are really what people are thinking about when they're talking about this, um, to you know, provide evidence and, and, and build narratives for this kind of thing. So the evaluation gap, that's not me, that's uh, Paul Walters at Leiden University. Um, you should Google, he's got a good blog post about this sort of thing. Right, so all that brings me to the point why I am here, all metrics, uh, having used up a, a lot of my time already. Um, so one of the things maybe that can help fill that evaluation gap, not by itself, but one of the things that contribute to it are all metrics. So all metrics is named, it was an all metrics manifesto. Uh, it did come out of academia. That's why it has to be a manifesto. Um, it's, it's a very good document. You should go and read it. It's at allmetrics.org. Um, it's written by five people, uh, some researchers and, and, and some people that publishers, but basically it's talking about now that research is increasingly happening online, you know, certainly we read uh, papers online, or at least we, you know, go to the website and download the PDF online. Um, we create papers in, in Word, we save references to Mendeley and uh, other reference managers. You know, is there data that we can find from all that and extract useful patterns or indicators? And there's lots of people interested in this space. Almetric.com is one of them. That's why I made the distinction earlier. As opposed to the field of all metrics, allmetrics.com is one company. There's others, Impact Story, Plum Analytics, uh, P Public Library of Science Plus, uh, which I'm sure you, you all know, um, also does quite a lot in the, in the space, and uh, Martin is here from, from Plus. So there are tools that exist that can help you in your institution, in your journal. Uh, funders gather all this evidence of attention and impact. And again, that doesn't necessarily mean quality, right? Uh, uh, right now I'm focusing on attention and, and impact. And the way it does that is by saying, okay, well, as well as the citations and the academic attention that we can get, let's bring in other stuff. Let's bring in things that we can learn about the broader attention paid to work. And that could be everything from mentions in blogs, in uh, news stories, if you think about you know, a big uh, research paper covered in the New York Times or the Washington Post or, or whatever, or, or smaller papers or, or magazines as well. Um, comments. So that could be in PubMed comments, on PubPeer, uh, Science Open, all this kind of thing. Um, and on social media as well. I put social media last because one of the things I hear a lot about all metrics is, well, you know, does counting the tweets about a paper really mean anything? And the answer is no, but it is still worth bringing into the discussion. Sometimes it is useful. If you think about them being more kind of things that could potentially provide you with evidence of attention, there's also things that are more indicators of impact. So if you think about whether or not a paper is cited in that NICE uh, guideline that we saw before, it doesn't need to be from NICE, it could be any kind of policy, anything that's used by people on the ground, if you like, to influence practice, uh, to, to influence the decisions they make. You know, if you think about the World Health Organization, uh, something a bit more high level, like the Inter Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, you know, all of these things are evidence-based, they're based on research. And you as a researcher should get credit if your work is influencing those policies, right? It's not right that just because they're not on web science or whatever, you can't, you know, there's not a, 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 an acceptance within the system that you can just take them and provide the evidence for them and uh, get credit for it. I'll skip over this one uh, to go straight to this slide, which I think is very important. It's good to note at this point that we can gather all this information but by itself you just end up with a big list of you know links to online things right it still needs human context someone needs to take all the data they need to take what we we're talking about before the different type of impact you know you need to know what you're supposed to be demonstrating and then match the two and usually the way that works is, is through narrative right that seems to be the accepted way i don't know if it's the best way necessarily um but it tends to be presented qualitatively rather than quantitatively. So that's partly why in my first slide I said you can't measure impact. And that's why our metric is actually a terrible name. Um, it's too late for me now. I've already named the company. I've got the main name and everything. Uh, so I can't change it. But it is bad. First of all, because alt implies alternative. It's actually complementary. And second of all, because metrics implies that it's all going to be a number. It's not really a number. So, assuming an academic, you can see not that, you're, you're right, Ewan. Uh, this is 
this is my dream. Where can I obtain such a tool? So again, I'm not going to go through long examples. It's better for you. I say just go and check it out. It's free. You can go to allmetrics.it. Um, you can get bookmarklet, and there's some stuff on the page there that explains how to use it. Um, basically, what we do, and it's similar to a lot of the other tools, is we have this details page, a report for each article that we work with. Um, I can talk about it in the break if you're interested. Quite a lot of publishers have it already on a journal. There's a little badge there. There's an AM score, and it's got a number. And you click on it, and you get brought to the, the details page for that article. So in this case, for example, there's a paper about measurement of boundary layer ozone concentrations on board a Skywalker UAV, which sounds quite cool. Uh, it's just like a little remote uh, UAV, a little drone. And from the details page, we can see that it's been picked up a couple of months after publication by, um, by a UK government report talking about whether or not you could use drones to measure methane above big fields of cats. And this is the kind of use that I like to see of Allmetric. So this is a tweet from the author. Um, they've noticed from the Allmetric details report that they have been picked up in this document. Right? They didn't know about it before. You don't get an email saying you've been cited in UK government policy. That doesn't happen. You know, maybe if you're involved in actually setting the policy, you'd know about it. But otherwise, you don't necessarily. And this is what we're trying to do. right? Bring the information to the researchers so they have this evidence available. Um, there's indicators of different places they should go and you know, find out more about the story. It's up to Samuel Lillingworth in this case to go and read the document, see how much, it, you know, it, did it really make a difference. Um, if they're writing a case study, you know, they'd need to talk to, to see whether or not that policy actually got put into practice, if it just went into a filing cabinet and never got read ever again. But the point is that now he knows about it, he didn't before. So I'm going to wrap up there. Um, what I will say is that it's, our metrics is quite a new field. It's not that it's been going along, going around for you know, 20 years. People have been doing this kind of thing for a long time. The name is pretty new, but people have been doing this kind of analysis for a while. Um, and there's lots of different opportunities for people to get involved if you're interested in it. So in the US, there's a NISO standards groups running at the moment in a couple of different areas. Um, we're running a conference along with, with PLOS and Elsevier and Springer and uh, the Wellcome Trust, a bunch of other people. Um, in Amsterdam in October called 2 a.m. We had one last year called 1 a.m. And uh, finally, if you don't do anything else from this talk, what I would encourage you to do is, uh, and if you've got kids, you'll know why this is difficult to Google for, but if you Google for Dora, um, <laughs> or San Francisco Dora maybe, um, and read the declaration, the San Francisco Declaration on Research Assessment, there's a lot of good stuff in there, uh, and a lot of, kind of community around it, if you like. Thanks very much. Yeah, right now is the critical bit there, I think. Uh, there's, uh, later on, I think, where potential, the potential is, and, and right now where it's used. I think right now where it's most useful is actually an aggregate and not so much for individual researchers. So it's more useful um, at the research admin level, if you like, um, or departmental level, where given a large set of papers, you know, you, you maybe need the indicator to just, you know, I want 10 of these to write a case study about, or I want to pick a short list of 10 to kind of focus in on. Um, that said, researchers can use it. They do. We've got there's a series of blog posts actually on the Almetric blog uh, where we've interviewed different researchers doing it, and they encounter different, you know, varying degrees of resistance or acceptance. I think some of them are pleasantly surprised, and they are, oh yes, yeah, definitely, that's you know, that's why I got my position. And some of them go, well, I put it on there. I don't think anyone actually cared, but you know, I did it anyway. Um, and that's that's more of the potential bit. I think. I think what we can do. Well, first of all, I think it's never going to be a, again a step change. I think it's got to be a gradual thing in the same way that gradually we've gone to the point where you know, soft, we're now having the discussion about you know, software and data sets being primary research objects. That didn't happen overnight. It took a very long time. The same thing's going to happen with these kind of you know, the impact, if you like, of works being uh, counted as well.
I was um, really intrigued by the example you gave of um, a report that you picked up, and I see you also tracking Wikipedia. How is how would I, as a database provider, become a source for you? Because I can see from my point of view that being able to tell researchers that this database has made use of their research would be great. It's yeah. a tool to engage with people. But that would require you monitoring my database. Is there a mechanism for doing that? Yeah, there's not a f formal process. I mean, to be honest, it's very ad hoc. Um, we've worked with a lot of, uh, I don't know if we work so much with other databases other than Wikipedia and things, but, you know, we've worked very quickly with other sort of uh, online commenting systems, so Publons and PubPeer and this kind of thing. Um, we're quite a small company, so we can move quite quickly. Um, the, the real thing is just as a, a cost benefit, which sounds harsh, but it's really, you know, how many people are going to find the information useful. And for some sites, it's, it's not many, but for others, it's enough for us to put in the you know, couple of days or whatever it'll take to do a connection. Right, so it's a conversation we, we should have. Yeah, yeah, and I'd love to have that conversation with you. Great, thanks. Hi. Um, how comfortable are you or not, and if you've got some mixed ideas there about becoming the thermos or the hoover, that is to say, all metrics and all metrics. In other words, you, you know, the, the Google is the Google, and we understand what the Google does, because most of what it does, it doesn't tell us, it sort of puts it under the hood. Yeah. And your problem, if I might put it that way, is that you're not putting it under the hood, you're actually saying this is an interesting argument. And you got hung up with yeah. being an approach to that, <coughs> and trying to make a business out of it, at the yeah. same time as saying, actually, I'm not quite sure whether what we're doing is what needs to be done. How comfortable are you? Well, I wouldn't go that far. I mean, we do a lot of things that aren't impact. Like, I'm talking about impact here. Yeah. But actually, we do our main business, if you like, is working with publishers. And there, we're not looking at impact at all. What we're looking at is attention. And there, I'm quite comfortable saying, you know, we have a score that's about attention, right? It doesn't measure impact. Otherwise, this talk wouldn't be very good. Uh, but I'm very comfortable there. With impact, I think we do need to be careful. And that's why I'm a bit more hesitant about kind of jumping in and going, yeah, all metrics, you know. Um, use the all metric process and it'll all be fine. Because I honestly don't know. How, well, and I don't think anyone knows necessarily um, at all around metrics and impact, and this is partly, the, you know, what I'm sure we're going to hear about from, from Stephen. Um, you know, what the workflows are going to be and what the best practices are and all this kind of thing. People are still learning. Okay, um, I think that brings us to the end of you in the session. If anyone has any other questions, they can ask them at the break. But thank you very much again. Thank you.